Well, about four years ago, I got a gift. And it wasn't a gift that I thought I needed. And it was not a gift that I actually wanted. But it's a gift that I got. And I got it from you. From Shoreline Church. Uh, now, I don't know how each of you open gifts. Um, are there those people that like do it really slowly? You peel back the tape and you try to save the paper? You know, there's people like that. I'm not one of them. <laughs> I just tend to... Uh, Get the thing open as fast as I can, and so I'll do that. And so I got this gift, and it's a practical gift, but it's not something I had in mind. Uh, and so this is what I received. And what happens is, at Christmas time, since long before I came to Shoreline, Shoreline gives a gift to each of the staff members, and we get, get to have something kind of fun with that. And so this was my gift, a helmet to protect my noggin here. Uh, I, at that time, I'd been snowboarding for over 30 years, and I'd never worn a, worn a helmet. And by personal protest, I didn't want to wear a helmet. I liked the freedom of not wearing a helmet, and I got this. So thank you all for this gift. So when I first put it on, it was really uncomfortable and really awkward. The strap, the strap around my chin, still four years later, still kind of irritating. But after, when I first put it on, I didn't like it. It was uncomfortable. I wore it for the whole day, the next day. Now four years have gone by. And I actually, I like my helmet. I'm happy with my helmet. It keeps my ears warm. You can put, little, you can put your earbuds in here, and you can have music playing. And it's, it's uh, if you happen to fall, and I, my, I'm committed to fall eight to ten times every time I snowboard really, really hard because I like to push myself and have fun. And so I, I th thank you for this gift, but I need to tell you, it took a while for me to get used to it. It took me a while till I could say, I love my helmet. I went out this last season only one time. With actually went with Mike Weiss, who's the pastor of Monterey Church. Yes, I hung out and went snowboarding for a whole day with another local pastor because pastors around here like each other. Uh, we actually do. So Mike and I had a great time, but I wore my helmet and lo loved wearing it. And so I want to think with you about the God that we worship, a God who delights to give gifts. Our God loves to give gifts to us. And sometimes the gifts he gives to us are not exactly what we were wanting, not always what we asked for, and sometimes when we first get them, it takes a while to get used to them and to feel comfortable with those gifts. But when we do, we come to love those gifts and see what God can do through them. We're starting today a little two-week series called A Thriving Church. And today I want to talk about what I think is one of the biggest things that helps a local church thrive and be healthy and be what God wants it to be. Next week, we're going to talk about one of the things that I think is the most dangerous, damaging, worst things for a local church. So we're starting positive this week. And next week we're going to talk about the, the thing we need to avoid and stay away from because it can just destroy a local church. But in terms of helping the church be healthy, we're going to talk about that today. And it really comes from a number of passages in the Bible. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'll also read this passage uh, and uh, you, can, you can just listen as I walk through the passage. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, and beginning in verse 1, we read these words. Now about the gifts of the Spirit. This is talking about gifts that God gives. That if you're a follower of Jesus, whether you're five years old or 15 or 75, when you became a Christian, God gave you a gift. One or more gifts he put in you. And, and he wants you to discover those and use those for his glory. So now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. Paul says some people don't understand the gifts of the Spirit. They're not informed. You shouldn't be one of those people. You need to understand this. So pay attention, right? Verse 4 says this. There are different kinds of gifts... But, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. You see the Trinitarian God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, giving you a gift. Whether you know what your gift is or not, you have a gift. And God has something in mind for you to do with that. And then verse 7 kind of clarifies why God gives us these gifts. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit, that's your gifting, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. God has gifted you to be a blessing to others, to be a blessing to our community around us, to be a blessing to the world, to be a blessing in the church, and to be a blessing to God. He delights in the gifts he has given to you, and he wants to see you expand those and use those. Now turn with me to Romans chapter 12, and I want to read another passage about spiritual gifts. Romans chapter 12, beginning of verse 4, says this. For just as each of us has one body with many parts, with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ 
We, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Now pause right there before verse 6. And understand the picture that Paul is painting. He's saying, you have a physical body, and you know how it works. You've got ears and eyes and a nose and fingers and toes, all these different parts. But you're, you're one person, you're one body. He's saying, the church is like that. All kinds of different people with different gifts, different abilities, different skills given by God. And they all fit together to make the church healthy. And then it gets really, really complicated. I want you to see if you can, if you can follow what he's saying next. He says, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, declaring God's truth with power, if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If your gift is serving, here's what he says. If your gift is serving, brace yourselves. He says, if your gift is serving, then serve. Everybody following me? Next he says, if your gift is teaching, even if you don't have your Bible open, take a guess what comes next. If your gift is teaching, then teach. Everybody follow? It's not, not very complicated, right? If your gift is to encourage, then give encouragement. If your gift is giving, then give generously. If your gift is to lead, do it diligently. If your gift is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. What's he saying? Use your gift. Do it. Be involved in something for the glory of Jesus. And then, if you look at 1 Peter chapter 4, kind of our final passage for today that we're going to look at, in 1 Peter 4, we read these words, beginning in verse 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received. Back to these gifts again. God's given you a gift. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God, God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the words of God. There are some gifts that are speaking gifts, teaching gifts, encouraging gifts. Do it for the glory of God. If anyone serves, there's service gifts, compassion, mercy, care. If anyone serves, they should do it with the strength God provides. So that in all things, listen to this, I love this. So that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Lord, our prayers, we open your word today, is that we will bring you glory and praise forever and ever. That our lives will be so surrendered to you that whether we're 14 years old, like one of our singers was on stage today, we'll use our gifts for you. Whether we're 95 years old, we'll still use our gifts for your glory and everyone in between. Make this church, Shoreline Church, a thriving church and make every church that believes the Bible and preaches Jesus a healthy, thriving church, God, for your glory and for the sake of the world, we pray this. Amen. You know, when people use their gifts, amazing things happen. I could be in Michigan last weekend and worship with all of you because Joel, who was right here running a camera and is here almost every single week, four weeks from now, he and his wife ship out with the military. But almost every single week since during COVID, he has been here serving because some of our high school kids are running cameras and everything. I could worship with you because God's people were using their gifts for the glory of Jesus. That's how the church works. Thousands of people in our community get food every single month because our food pantry is right there. But can I tell you something? Having that building right there doesn't get the job done. We have about 60 volunteers who volunteer sometimes three, four, five hours a week because someone's got to go pick up the food and organize the food and sort the food and package the food and get it ready and then put the food in people's cars and then say, can we pray for you? Would you like a Bible? And talk with people and care for people. How does that happen? How, how, how do you have thousands of people impacted that way? Because people say, I have a gift of mercy, compassion, care, and I'm going to show up here and I'm going to serve people. Or I'm going to come after hours where no one's going to see me and organize food. Or I'm going to do administration and organize all the details behind the scene because there's all these moving parts. Do you know there's a spiritual gift of administration? It's in the Bible. People, people say, oh, I don't really have a gift from the Lord, but I'm really good at organizing things. That's a spiritual gift. Newsflash. Use it for God's glory. There's, we, we have a ministry here at Shoreline called CERT, S-E-R-T. Uh, my guess is that 90% of you don't know what that is, S-E-R-T. It's Shoreline Emergency Response Team. And it's a team of people, a lot of them are uh, retired firefighters, police, or still serving in, as first responders. 
And in every single service, we've got people around here. So if something goes wrong, like the, the church where my, my youngest son, Nate, was preaching today in Michigan, they had a guy just literally pass out right before the first service. Right there. At Shoreline, it'd be like the cert team is like, bam, they're there. They're trained, they're equipped, and they're using their gifts for the glory of Jesus. Did you know we had that? We do. Some of you are like, I could help with that. I could honor God that way. But that, that's, you know, children's ministry, youth ministry, there's so many opportunities. And so you use your gift for the glory of Jesus. And then something happens when you understand this. Here's a question for you. How many ministers does Shoreline Church have? Who are the ministers at Shoreline? Well, you might say we have you know, eight or nine or ten ministers. I'm not sure exactly. Like, I'll go on the staff site and see how many, how many full-time licensed pastors we have. Well, I didn't ask how many pastors we had. I said, how many ministers do we have? You know what a minister is? A servant. You're right. Every person here is a minister, right? I got somebody here. You're going ahead of me on my sermon. I like that. He's going, he's going it's all of us. You got it, right? And so a 14-year-old girl uses her gifts of her voice to minister. And high school kids are running cameras and making sure we can bring this message to other people in other places. And you use your gifts right where you are. If you have 50 people in your church who love Jesus, you have 50 ministers. If you have 1,000, you have 1,000 ministers. Could you imagine what a church could do if they had 5,000 ministers? Right? I'm looking at donut people right now and coffee people. Your donut and coffees don't just appear. <laughs> right? There's people that are ministering. The gift of helps. The gift of, 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 of mercy. <coughs> and so... I want you to join me in praying that God will speak to our hearts. Each person here, this is my prayer today, Lord, this is our prayer. That every person who's part of Shoreline, who loves you and believes in you, Jesus, that each person would discover their gifting and develop it and grow it and then deploy, go out and use it for your glory. To that end, O oh God, speak to us by your spirit. We pray for the sake of Jesus. Amen. I still remember the first time I got to open this book, the Word of God, and teach somebody from the Bible. I was 16 years old. I became a Christian when I was 15. And the church I was part of said, oh, you're a Christian now. You should do some kind of ministry. And they noticed I had some teaching gifts. It didn't make me nervous to get in front of people. I could just get up and talk. So I had to learn the Bible. And I remember the first time I taught the Bible, here's what happened. I could feel... The presence of God fill me and pour through me and help other people learn about Jesus. And I've never been the same. That was one of the most incredible moments of my whole life. I was 16. I wasn't paid. I wasn't on staff. I was a high school kid. I was, I was a, a junior in high school. But I, I, I said, anytime anyone wants to teach the Bible, sign me up. I'm there. And for years, I volunteered doing that. Why? Because I'm a Christian. That's what Christians do. That was one, that's one of my gifts. Now I get to use it as part of my full-time ministry, but I did this for years before I ever thought of it being a job. It's just doing what God called me to do. You have something in you that when you do that thing, it will unleash part of you. You will find a joy and a satisfaction. You'll find a joy and satisfaction that you won't find almost anywhere else. I actually, this, this idea of the healthy church, being a church where every person is using their gift, this is so important to me. I literally spent six years studying this topic. Six years of my life. I did an entire doctoral program for six years, and I studied this one concept. Here's the concept. How do you build a church around all the gifts of God's people and not around a pastor? Because a church that's built around a pastor, when that pastor has a heart attack and drops over dead, when that pastor moves away, when that pastor makes a dumb choice and gets in trouble or something, all of a sudden the church falls apart. Why? It's all built around a pastor. But if the church is built around the ministers, all of you, the church continues on. When God calls a pastor on to the next place, the church continues. Why? Because it's not built on a pastor. It's built on the body of Christ. Amen? I mean, that's what we're supposed to be all about. And so that means that you need to discover what your gifting is and develop your gifts for the glory of God. So with the time we have left, and uh, I had this problem today. When I'm preaching three times, and I'm teaching, actually I have an hour and a half group at, for a Bible memory group after this third service, I tell myself, don't sing. Just lip out the words, but don't sing, because I'm going to wear my voice out. But this morning, I couldn't, where's Cole? I couldn't stop singing. I just, every time, I'd be like, don't sing, and all of a sudden, I'd be singing again. And so you have to be patient. 
because I use my voice a lot more today than I probably should have. I've got to learn to settle myself down, but I get so excited when we're worshiping, I can, it's hard, hard to not praise the Lord. So I want to answer three questions today. If you're a note taker, you can write these down. If you're not a note taker, write them down in your mind. But here's the questions we're going to answer. How do I discover my gifts? How do, I, how do I know what my spiritual gifts are? How do I discover my gifts? How do I develop my gifts? How do I grow them to use them well? And then how do I deploy my gifts? How do I get my gifts out there working for the glory of Jesus? So let's walk through this together. How do I discover my gifts? Number one, learn about spiritual gifts and take the gifts assessment because the teaching of Scripture will clarify all about spiritual gifts. As a matter of fact, today at 1 o'clock, there'll be an online class. We did a class right after the first service, one after the second service. All the people at home or those that were here in services or this one, if you get home by 1 o'clock, go online. My wife Sherry will lead a class. It's about 15 minutes of teaching about spiritual gifts on top of what I've taught here. About 15 minutes of teaching. And then 15 minutes, you'll do a self-assessment. And that will give you a report on what your strongest areas of gifting are and ways to develop. And then if you want to, you can hit a certain button and we'll have somebody meet with you one-on-one and walk you through how you can learn to, to grow and develop that gift for the glory of Jesus. If you want to live into this, it's as easy as that. And so number one, how do I discover my gift? Use the spiritual gifts assessment. Come to the class at one o'clock today online. Second, how do I discover my gifts? I talk with believers who know me well, and I get wisdom from community. How do I, you know, how do I discover my gifts? I look at certain people and I say, hey, tell me, what do you see in me? What are the gifts that you see that God has given me? How do you think God might use me? You can ask questions like, you know, what do you think I do well that could be used for Jesus? How do you think God could use me in the church or how could God use me in our community? You ask someone who's close to you, they'll know what you do well. You can say, where do you see God bearing fruit through me, doing something through me that could be a blessing to others? So ask people who you trust and who know you well. The people that I'm closest to, if I ask them, what do you think I do well, they know and they can tell me. If I say to them, what are things I don't do very well, my closest friends will tell me that too. Because I can't do everything. But the thing in the church is not a problem because there's things you do really well that I don't do really well. And when you put all the parts of the body together, they all function as a whole. And so, you know, talk to people who are committed believers, who love you, who care about you, and say to them, you know, what do you think God has in me for his glory? I remember years ago, as a young pastor, uh, I was pastoring a church, and uh, I was an associate pastor of a church in West, in West Michigan. And in the church, there was this woman named Cindy. And Cindy was probably one of the most like natural people I've ever met at talking about Jesus, sharing their faith. I looked at her and I thought, she's definitely got a gifting. One of the spiritual gifts is evangelism. All of us share our faith, but some people, they're just like, they just naturally talk about Jesus and people don't get offended. They're just like, they're, they're compelling and warm. It's a gifting they have from the Lord and they can develop it, but it's part of a gifting. And Cindy, I, I saw her and she was like that. She was one of those people. So I asked her one time about, did, you know, did she think she had the spiritual gifting of evangelism? And she says, no, I don't think I have that gift. And I said, well, why do you say that? She says, well, because um, I don't think I have that gift because I really enjoy it and I do it so naturally. And I'm like, I said to her, wait, you do it naturally and you enjoy it, so you think it's not your gift? She said, well, yeah, because like when you follow Jesus, isn't it supposed to be like painful and hard? And I said, well, Jesus said take up the cross, so we would do anything for Jesus, but if he's going to gift you for a lifetime of serving him, don't you think he's going to give you a gift that comes naturally, that fits who you are? And so she did, the, she did the, the spiritual gifts survey that Sherry's going to do with some of you today. And you know what her strongest gift was? Evangelism. <laughs> and I wasn't surprised. If she would have asked me, I would have said, of course that's your gifting. I see it in you. So ask people and, and learn from them and discover your gifting. And then number three, how do I discover my gifts? Experiment with ministries that get your attention and kind of have fun sampling different things. As you're part of Shoreline Church, and you hear about a ministry. Some of you heard me talk about the Shoreline Emergency Response Team. And some of you are like, I didn't know we had that. That sounds really cool. I'd lo- Man, i got to know more about that. Check it out. Learn about it. You can spend a Sunday walking with somebody and shadowing them as they do it. And you might just go, this is me. This is a, I can use this to serve Jesus? Yes. But, but, but look into it. And experiment. Try it a little bit. Uh, I, I, I love sampling things, trying things. For a while at Costco, no samples, right? You know what I heard? In the next month or so, I've heard samples are coming back again. That's how you know the world is getting normal again. When the masks are coming off, when people are hugging, and when Costco gives samples. It's like the world, the world is at peace, you know? Uh, and so, but, but when it comes to different ministries, try something. 
You know, you may come, you may come here and you say, okay, there's these teams of people that, that smile and welcome us and give donuts and coffee. Could I be part of Some of you go, I'd love to do that. Then try it. Come and talk to our people and say, I want to be part of that. You may have a real love for children or youth. So talk to Greg or talk to Brandon and say, I want to learn more about what that would be like and sample it, try it out. It may be a great fit, it may not be, but if you try something that doesn't work, guess what? Try something else. And eventually you're going to find something, you're going to go, that's me. And here's what you're going to feel. I, I, if you're not looking at me, look at me for a second. Here's what you're going to feel when you find the right place with your gifting. You will feel the Spirit of God Almighty fill you and pour through you and touch somebody else. And you'll go, oh, I didn't know God could use me like that. That's true for every Christian. There's nothing like it. So try different things and be open to, to experimenting, trying different ministries till you find where you fit. Number four, how do I discover my gifts? Number four, pray for the passion of God and the power of Holy Spirit confirmation. When you're serving, when you're doing something, say, God, when I find the right thing, let me just feel it in my soul. God, let me have a passion. Let me say, I love to do this. Our worship team here, do you know, some of you guys don't know this. There's a service before this service at Shoreline. And then there's a service before that service here at Shoreline. And then these musicians and production people show up. You're here at the 1130, it's 1130 service, right? 1130 service. There's a 10 o'clock service. There's an 830 service. And there's people here before 830, like at, you know, what time, Joel, what time do people get here? Five. five. Were you here at five this morning? Okay. Why? To serve God. God. And do you feel the Holy Spirit pour through you? That's what I'm talking about, right? Some of you you are like, that's not my thing. That's okay. There's evening stuff too. (laughs) You can can serve Jesus in the evening too. But you know what? This This is, why would you do that? Because you feel the pleasure of God and he pours through you. And you have a passion for it. Because you're a Christian. And when you feel that, you'll never be the same. So find out what it is. All right. So here's the question. Will you begin the adventure of discovering how God, the God of the universe wants to work in and through you? Because there's nothing else like it. Will you say, God, I'm open. I'll check it out. I'll take a next step and find my place to engage and to serve. In the first service today, uh, Dr. Alexander, who's the vice president of our board, uh, was in the service. And I said to him, I said, Dr. Alexander, I said, if 80% of a physical body shut down, what would be the person's physical condition? You know what he said in one word? Dead. <laughs> if 80% of your functions shut down, you know what a lot of people say? People say, well, in most churches, about 20% of the people do all the ministry. And about 80% of the people just observe. So what do you call it, the spiritual body of Christ when 80% of the members aren't functioning and using their gifts? I'm not exactly sure, but figure it out, right? It's not healthy. So, so there, there's gifts of generosity, there's gifts of compassion, and gifts of mercy, there's gifts of teaching, there's gifts of helps. Just set up tear down, helping with things. There's all these different gifts. Discover that gift and begin to use it for the glory of God. So how do I, once I know what my gift is, how do I develop my gift? All right? How do I develop my gift? How, here, number one, start serving. The apostle said, if you've got the gift of teaching, teach. <laughs> if you have the gift of giving, be generous. Start doing it, whatever that gift is. Maybe you'd love to pray. We have an inter, that's a spirit, spirit, intercessory prayer is a spiritual gift. If you have that gift, jump onto one of, our, one of our prayer teams with people after services or during the week. We have people that have a prayer sheet and they pray faithfully for all the, your needs that come in. And then on our website, on our website, you can go on the website today or this week and at the very top there's a little tile that, set, talk, that talks about ways to serve at Shoreline. If you click on that, it opens up a page that has like eight boxes. Kids ministry, youth ministry, you know, odds and ends, uh, you know, just all, all, kind, all kinds of different service ministries, uh, outreach ministries. If you click on that box, it'll open up all kinds of opportunities. And when you can do it and how it works and who to contact, you can check it out just by sitting at home or on your phone or on your tablet or on your computer and see what's out there. So, so how do you do it? You just find a place and start serving. And just get engaged in serving in some way. How do I develop my gifts? Invite input. Ask people. When you start to use your gifts, say, how am I doing? Do you think I could do better at this? I think we should all want to keep getting better and better at what God has called us to do and be. As a young pastor, as I was pastoring, I was an associate pastor at Zion Church in Granville, Michigan, and Ron Geshwant was a senior pastor. And Ron Geshwant was one of the best leaders I've ever worked with. He was such a gifted leader. So I'm going to learn from him. But he wasn't the kind of guy, he was kind of old school. He wouldn't come to me and say, Kevin, you got to do this, this, and this. But I knew he had thoughts about what would make me a better leader. So I said to him, Ron, can I take you out to lunch once a quarter, every three months? I'll buy you lunch. 
And all I want to do is ask you questions about how I'm doing and how I can be a better leader, a better pastor, a better person. I, just, I want to learn from you. He said, I'd love to do that. So I take him out to lunch. I remember the first time we had lunch. We sat down in this restaurant, and I said, I said, Ron, I know, and he was a guy very uh, more traditional, more formal than I am. Everyone's a little bit more formal than I am, but, um, but he, very traditional. He'd wear like the, Gene the, the black Genevan robe with like the doctoral stripes and very, very formal. And I said to him, I said, Ron, um, how am I doing like during the worship services? How do you feel like I'm doing like an assisting? Because he would be the, the lead pastor. I was kind of the number two guy and sort of the assistant pastor. And he said, well, he said, you're a little bit folksy. And I said, I don't know what folksy means. <laughs> and he said, well, like you're really casual and, and I, I lead more of a formal service. And you're really casual. And he said, I think that your casualness and my formalness kind of offset each other in an awkward way. I said, then how can I lead better when I'm alongside of you? And he shared a lot of ideas that have helped me become a better leader. Now, now I'm the senior pastor, it's a little more casual. I would have never got away with jeans uh, in, in those days in that church, right? But I grew up in Southern California in Huntington Beach. I'm kind of a relaxed guy, so I, I like things a little bit more casual. But, I, I, but here's the thing. When I step into a formal setting, I know how to behave. Why? Ron Gesh went. I learned from him. Learn from people. Ask questions and let God speak through them to you. Invite input. How do I develop my gifts? Watch others. When you see somebody do something well, when you come to church here, our greeters, our welcomers, our people that have our readers, they are so gracious, they are so warm, they're so kind. Watch them and say, man, I could do that. I could learn from them. Uh, discover how to do things. I, I know that I learned how to speak and how to teach from a guy named Dan Webster. He was the, my, the youth pastor when I became a Christian. And he was a great communicator. I watched him and I learned from him. I learned how to lead from Ron Geshwent. If you got involved in middle school ministries, high school ministries, if you got involved in children's ministries, Brandon and Greg will teach you. They'll mentor you. They'll equip you. They're not going to take you and throw you in a room with 10 kids in a box of curriculum and say, have fun. They're going to equip and train you and prepare you to do ministry and to succeed. And, and, and so watch others and learn from them and follow their example. How do I develop my gifts? Keep sharpening your skills. Never be content. Always try to get better and better and better. I want to be a better preacher next month and next year than I am today. I want to get better for the glory of Jesus. I want to get better to more effectively serve you as a congregation. My wife Sherry leads a team of, of adults in our church who teach adult classes. And it's been over three years she's been doing this. And she does regular training with all, some of those teachers have been part of this ministry for over three years. But we were talking on our flight home from Michigan yesterday, and she was saying, I got another training coming up. And she was talking and strategizing, how can I help these teachers become even better? They've been doing it for three years. They're grown-ups. But, she, but every time she teaches them, they become more effective. So keep growing. Whatever your gift is, keep growing it for the glory of Jesus. Keep expanding that gift. So here's a question. Will you commit time and energy to sharpen and grow the gifts that God has given you? Because it does not happen on its own. It doesn't just happen. You know, worship like we experienced today doesn't just happen. This team, had production like we had today, they literally had everything set up in there. They've got to take it apart, bring it over here. I have to put a different mic pack on. They've got to do another sound. All this stuff happens because there's people working it hard to make it happen well. And, and, and so it, it takes time to sharpen and develop those gifts. I was, I was asking George. George is our drummer. Um, he, he's one of the guys that plays drums for us. But George sings when he drums. Have you noticed this when you watch him? When George drums over here, he, he worships. He sings. I love that. I said to George this morning, I said, does this just happen, this uh, worship that happens at Shalim? Mean, it's just like, you, you're gifted as a drummer, so you just showed up one day and started drumming, right? And he, he laughed. He goes, oh, years of learning. And you know what? At five in the morning, our musicians are getting here. They, they have their music. They're practicing. They're preparing. To become, it doesn't just happen. Nothing, almost nothing good in the world. If you're a gifted musician, somebody says, oh, you just have such natural talent. You go, yeah, natural talent and about 8,000 hours of practice. <laughs> it, it all goes together. Keep developing your gifts for the glory of Jesus. And then the final question is, how do I deploy my gifts? How, okay, so I've discovered what my gifting is. I start to develop those gifts, but now I've got to do something with them. I've got to get involved in ministry. So how do I deploy? How do I use my gifts? Number one, find a place to serve, inside or outside of the church. Find somewhere where you can serve and glorify Jesus. Find somewhere where you can pour out your life and make an impact for God's glory. It might be in the local schools. It might be in your neighborhood. It might be here at Shoreland. It might be in your home. I remember for a number of years, my wife Sherry, who went, did a degree in education, she did a degree in theology, a master's in theology, and for many years she said, and now I'm going to follow my calling. I'm going to raise three little boys. And she poured her life into three little boys who now are three young men who love Jesus. 
But, but that, she, said, she said, that's my calling. That's my ministry in this season. And then later on, she said, now I can jump back into church stuff. You got to say, where's my place? And then you find your place. And so, Lord, give me a place to serve you and to honor you. And if you're not sure where to start, uh, Patty, who's back at the Welcome Center there, Patty has, knows every, if you can't get online or you want to know, Patty, every, she will answer any question you have about any ministry at Shoreland. And if she doesn't know, she will find out and get back to you because that's what she loves to do. That's her passion. Is Patty back there right now? She's over here. Okay, that is, it is her passion. She, her, her gifting and passion is to connect people. Patty, do you love to connect people to ministry? <laughs> she says, I love it. Now, we didn't practice this. I didn't know I was going to ask her that, but, uh, but it, it's just true, right? How do I deploy my gifts? Here's another one. And I want to speak to all those that are on campus in your cars and also online. Return to a place of service. Some of you were serving for weeks or months or years. And COVID hit. And a lot of things in the world shut down. But things are opening back up again. And some of you are, some of you need to stay home. You've got health issues and that kind of stuff. We understand. We bless that. No pressure. But man, if you're feeling better and you feel safe and feel comfortable, there's places. We got children's ministry that needs to be done and youth ministry that we need to launch and things that we can't do until people will step in and serve. Man, if, if you say, I'm ready to step back in, let this be the time. Contact, pa- contact Patty, contact the church and say, I want to talk about getting reengaged. If you're part of a certain ministry a year ago, just call the leader. Go online, find out you know, if it's the same leader or a different person and say, how do I get reengaged and be part of this? How, I de- how do I deploy my gifts? Try a new ministry that gets your attention. Maybe you hear about something going on at Shoreline. Maybe you heard about certain, you said, I never heard of the Shoreline Emergency Response Team. Check into it. Maybe you heard me talk about Sherry leading a, cl- a group of adult. She, Sherry had somebody after the first service that came and said, I didn't know that we had congregational members teaching adult classes. Sherry said, oh yeah, I've been training them and part of that. This was, I want to know more about that. If you hear about something that excites you, check it out. Dig into it. Don't just, just oh, that's interesting. But if something stirs in your heart and you're not engaged, just say, I want to figure out how I can get engaged and honor God and use my gifts for his sake. How do I deploy my gifts? Maybe you step in where there's a need for a season. Not every ministry you're ever going to do is perfectly in the middle of your gifting. But there's times where you hear, we need help. And I got two hands, two feet, and a heart that's ready to serve. I'll just jump in for a while. You might find out with time, you are gifted in that. You might find out, oh, that's not a long-term thing for me, but I can help for a while because we need someone to help. A lot of our staff has done that the last year. A lot of our staff has gone out of their work areas to do whatever needs to be done around Shoreline. Because that's what you do when you're part of the church. Sometimes you just jump in, jump in and help and do all you can to keep things going and to keep things moving forward. So you step in where there's a need and you use your gifts for the glory of Jesus. So I want to encourage you to go on the website and just open up the, the tab that talks about all of the different ministry opportunities and prayerfully explore and say, Lord, and, and, and let me tell you this, if you're already serving and you're fully engaged in service, great, keep doing it, be faithful. But if you're like, man, it's time for me to step back in. Or maybe for some of you for the very first time in your life to say, I've been to church for years, but I've never said, can I get engaged? Could God use me as a minister to bless others? I will tell you this. Not only will you become a blessing to others, you will feel God pour through you. And it it will change you. It will change you for the rest of your life. So Lord, this is our prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that by your spirit, you give a gift to every single Christian. You don't want us to be uninformed. You want us to understand what this is all about. So I pray that many will jump onto the online class today. I pray that, that many will talk to Patty, to talk to others. And, and most of all, Lord, that we would talk to you and say, Lord, how might you use me? How do you want to pour through me? Could I be a blessing to others? And Lord, take the gifts you've given to us. And with time, help us understand how they fit, how they, they feel right to us. Let us find joy and delight in using the gifts you've given to, to bless your church to bless the world, and to bless your heart, O God. We pray this in your name and for your glory. Amen. A couple quick things before I send you off with a word of blessing, uh, and a couple real important things. One is this. Uh, I mentioned already spiritual gifts class, 1 o'clock online today. If that sounds exciting for you, put on your counter right now so your phone beeps at 5 to 1. Go to our website, jump on, and be part of that class. Uh, Second, Starting next week, and we pray forever till Jesus returns, we, that's my prayer, but starting next week, there's no need to register for church at Shoreline anymore. Can I get an amen? Okay. Here's what you get to do. Just wake up on Sunday, and if you want to go at 8.30 or 10 o'clock, get in your car, drive over, and go to church. If you want to come at outdoors like this, just show up. We'll make sure there's a spot for you. When you get here, 
will say, do you want social distance seating or do you want open seating? And if you want open seating, you get to sit near other people. And if you want social distance, we'll get you seated and give you some room so you feel comfortable. Does that make sense? So registration is over. Praise the Lord. Next thing, on the 15th of, this, uh, of next month, the state of California is removing the mask guidelines. And so we're going to ask that outdoors, you don't have to wear a mask coming in and coming out. So I guess that's not a factor. But if you're here in an indoor service until the 15th, just wear your mask in and wear your mask out because that's still what the guidelines say. Um, I'm, I'm really ready to be done with masks. I've been ready to be done with masks for a long time. But look, I have a mask. And this is, the, this is why I have it. If I have someone at church starting after the 15th, I will not wear my mask ever again unless I'm coming near someone who has a mask. And I will say to them, hey, would you like me to put a mask on? If they say yes, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to honor them. Because I'm a pastor and I'm a Christian and we honor each other for where we're at. We don't know, I don't know what their health situation is. And so I'm going to keep a mask in my pocket. And if I come near somebody, I'm going to put my mask on if that would be helpful to them. But otherwise, after the 15th, no need to wear masks. Okay, so that's the, but, but also, if you want to wear a mask, please feel free to wear a mask. And if you want social distancing, we'll have that. And if you want just open seating, we'll have that. So as the 15th, we'll take a next step forward. And we hope it's a step forward that we take that we don't have to go backwards on. If you want prayer today, Pastor Dennis and his team are at the top of the stairs there under the big need prayer sign. Right when we're done from your cars, from the, from the courtyard, from the family worship venue around the building, you can come right up here to the top of the stairs and there's folks there to pray for you. If you're online, uh, you're going to see right there, you can email us your prayer need and we'll have our prayer team start praying for you. Or you can call the number you see and somebody's waiting voice to voice to talk and pray with you right now live on the phone. And if you're new at Shoreline and you're here on campus, go back to where the happy balloons are and Patty is there and Patty wants to give you a gift and thank you for coming and answer your questions. And if you're online, you're going to see right there a phone number. If you text the word welcome to that number, we will give you a digital welcome card and get to know you that way and answer any questions you have about the church. <sighs> That's all the announcements. Isn't that nice? Would you please, if you're able to stand, would you stand with me at home? I'd invite you to stand. If you're outside your car, feel free to stand. Robert, how you doing? Going to stand up with us there. Great. If you're in your car, and Bill and Barbara, good to see you. You stay seated right there. You're great. Uh, as you go from this place, may you know that the spirit of the living God has come, and he is with you. And if you're a Christian, he has gifted you. So discover your gift. Develop it for his glory. Deploy it. Use it. And watch what God does through you and in you for his glory. God bless you. Have a great week. And next week when you come back, we'll talk about the one thing you don't ever want to do because it will make the church not thrive. What you want to do is use your gifts. What you don't want to do, I'll tell you next week. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday.